Welcome to Voice of the Nation Special Edition Thailand's General Election. As the country is stepping towards the aging society, by 2040, it is projected that 17 million of Thai, or about 25% of the population, will be aged 65 years old or older, which is a big challenge for Thailand. Today, we are going to meet Khun Gon Jatikavanit, Prime Minister or candidate of Chad Patanakla party. The party is pushing its spectrum economy idea and among its main policy is more social welfare benefits for elderly people and making them a key part of the country's economic drivers. So today we are at the Banka Elderly Community, which today marks a very important event, which is the Thai New Year celebration. And as part of our culture, we have to do Rotnam Dam Hua of the elderly. That means that the elderly play, play an important role in our society and also in our country. Yeah. So what brings you here today? As you say, it's a, it's a great tradition of ours. Uh, so effectively, we will be paying our respect to the elderly and in return, uh, hopefully we receive that blessing. Increasing number, of course, uh, of elderly Thais mm -hmm. in the country. We've very fast moved into an aging society. And in fact, this process is, is due to accelerate in the next decade or so. So as a percentage of the overall population, we will have an increasing share uh, of elderly, which has uh, a lot of challenges, uh, both uh, to society, but, but certainly also to the economy. That I've already spoken with the elderly group here uh, is that uh, our party, Chapasak Bath Party, uh, specific policy uh, towards the elderly uh, is slightly different um, from, from others. Uh, our perspective of the elderly uh, is, is that they are an important asset to society. I think a lot of time, a lot of uh, political parties and, and even the society as a whole uh, tend to look at the elderly as a burden. Now, I, I think that's a wrong way of looking um, at an increasingly large segment of society. Uh, frankly speaking, 60 years old today is like 40 years old. They are so of, strong. Very strong and uh, keen to be uh, a part of the economy, keen to be part of the active society. Um, so our policy, for example, is to provide incentive for employers uh, to hire the elderly. So once you are past the age of 60, uh, if uh, a, a firm, an organization wants to hire the elderly, the government will have subsidized their pay uh, to the tune of 5,000 baht per elderly per month. So that basically reduces the cost of employers in employing a person of, in retirement age. Gon said the subsidies include in the policy for firms who recruit senior citizens will help reduce labor shortages, which is a win-win situation. People over the age of 65 would also be encouraged to continue working by paying only 50% income tax. In addition, the party will push for annual subsidy payments of 50,000 baht per household for renovations to ensure safety for elderly residents. ที่ชาพัฒนากล้าเนี่ยเราก็ได้รวมตัววันนี้จะเห็นนะครับมีคนรุ่นใหม่เอ่อมาสมัครเอ่อเป็นผู้แทนจํานวนมากนะครับร
the day prior to that, I was in Surat Thani, and the two days prior to that, I was in Phuket. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, traveling around a lot, meeting constituents, um, giving cheer to our uh, candidates, mm -hmm. and really try to trying to explain to as many people as possible what we're about and what the people will get if they were to vote for us. Mm -hmm. Your main policy is the spectrum economy. Right. With uh, you vow, your party vow to generate five trillion of revenue, yeah. to, especially to boost the economic growth. Right. Could you please elaborate more yeah, on this? Yeah, the thinking behind the spectrum economy, which we advocate, will increase income into the country by five trillion baht uh, within no more than five years. The, uh, the principal thinking behind that is that, you know, come election time, usually all you hear about, and you're hearing about it a lot, this election, is, uh, is giveaways. Um, so-called populist policies, uh, 3,000 baht that, 7,000 baht this, 10,000 baht that. And not a lot of ideas with regards to, or concrete ideas, with regards to how to increase people's income, how to increase uh, income into the country. So we thought that we would be different. We would, uh, especially given that Thailand is not a crossroad, really. Uh, we've been dependent on an industrial policy that's basically 40 years old. Uh, it's clearly uh, not providing the growth impetus uh, that we used to enjoy. I mean, GDP growth rate has been moribund at best these past three or four years. So we need new ideas. And the thinking behind the spectrum economy is that what Thailand needs to do, review what it's good at. What is it that we're good at? Um, what, what is it that we have that the world wants? And, and then basically uh, turn that into policies that uh, offer opportunities to the people. Um, and that's where the seven uh, colors in the spectrum the economy rainbow. comes from. Well, the seven colors. Rainbow is one of them. Um, okay. So, for example, green. Mm -hmm. uh, green represents obviously green economy. That almost goes without needing much uh, explanation right. is, is to do with the, uh, the major uh, global trend uh, towards uh, addressing climate change issues, um, to address uh, carbon neutral, neutrality uh, as a goal. Uh, it means that we need to completely revamp and, and invest massively, sort of new wave of investment to, towards greener energy is going to be one that uh, provides an opportunity to every Thai, every household. Um, and, and that's why it's so exciting. Um, so there's a lot of other things within green economy, but let's move on. So blue um, uh, strategy represents technology. Clearly one of the main global trends uh, is the very rapid uh, change in, in uh, technology that's affecting all of our lives and the way we do business. Um, and so there's a lot that we need to do participate in that change and huge opportunities uh, at the moment for example all the time we all use platforms but all the platforms are, are foreign so there's a lot of uh, income and data that that leaks out of, uh, of our system so I think it's time for us to develop our own platforms specifically in areas in which we should be good at for example tourism you know the fact that we have huge revenue uh, from hotel bookings but most hotel bookings are now done on platforms, all of which are international. We pay, our hotel operators pay, what, 20, 25% GP uh, to uh, platforms. So that's lost income. If we have our own platform, we can capture a huge amount of uh, revenue uh, within the country. The, the bureaucracy also uh, needs to revamp itself. Mm -hmm. um, the bureaucracy, Thai bureaucracy, is real famous for being a real drag on the people, on businesses. So we need to basically digitize the bureaucracy, bring all government service into our mobile phones. Um, and that would create enormous uh, cost savings and increase efficiency. So that's an example of, uh, of blue. You mentioned the rainbow. Blue. Rainbow, yes. So let's go to that. Uh, rainbow obviously represents uh, LGBTQ plus issues. Um. And um, our, uh, our main thesis on issues related to LGBTQ plus is uh, equal rights. Uh, that means equal marriage rights, uh, primarily, which is something still to be fought for. Um, but we think also that there is an enormous economic opportunity uh, within, within this sphere too. If you look at the uh, World Bank survey, um, they're quite specific that 
the purchasing power of the LGBTQ plus uh, group worldwide is enormous. It's something like 136 trillion baht, and um, and and they estimate that about 10% of that is used for travel, tourism. So that's almost 14 trillion baht. Now we're already top ranked uh, yes. as a destination for LGBT, LGBTQ plus travelers, and so if we can enhance uh, our status uh, by basically uh, giving LGBTQ plus equal rights within our country, that will send extremely positive signals worldwide and will help us increase our market share uh, of LGBTQ plus travel, um, bringing in you know, huge revenue into our already strong sector, which is tourism. So you know, that's where we are coming from. Uh, there are, there's also silver economy, there's grey economy. Grey is interesting because Thailand is one of the countries with um, the biggest uh, the, the, the most sort of uh, dark economy or grey economy outside of the system. Uh, the World Bank again estimates about 50% of GDP is unaccounted for um, and a major chunk of that is gambling. So we're saying, look, you know, it's about time we're pragmatic about this. Uh, pragmatic to is, make uh, a lot of things legalized? Correct. Um, instead of pretending it doesn't exist uh, and allowing corruption and dirty money uh, to uh, you know, to circulate the economy in the level it is. I think we should uh, legalize it, bring it into the open where it can be properly monitored, taxed, um, and, and help it create uh, proper paying jobs. And um, we're very good, we, we should be very good at this because we are service, uh, we're already a tourism uh, uh, country. Driven country. Mm -hmm. uh, why are we allowing um, this revenue to flow out of the country uh, to all our neighboring countries, all of whom have legalized gambling. The only country within this region that doesn't have legalized gambling is Thailand. It's ridiculous. And um, so it's about time we, I think, uh, be more pragmatic on this issue. Our proposal is that uh, we, don't, we don't freely liberalize gambling, but we will issue um, integrated resort licenses uh, for provinces that want it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't want to force this on anybody. So if Phuket wants it, and they could have their own referendum, if the people of Phuket support this idea, they can right. apply for it. Right. And um, investors who, for example, want to invest in building an integrated resort in Phuket can then do so. Uh, we can use that as a sandbox to monitor the pros and cons, negatives, positives, uh, before we make decisions on rolling that out nationwide. And um, that will bring in enormous revenues and I think it plays to our spend. We're already a tourism country. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's crazy that we're allowing uh, significant tourism business uh, to, you know, uh, to go elsewhere. What about SMEs? You emphasize on the SMEs as very well. Very much so, very much so. Um, you know, SME is what, 90% 90, 90 of people who are employed in companies are employed in, by SMEs. We fight for SMEs, we fight for the, the, the opportunity for them to access uh, funding, uh, uh, cheap funding, or at least funding at a, at a fair rate of interest. Um, we, we also feel that uh, what the economy as a whole needs uh, is free and fair competition. Uh, the problem with the market economy in Thailand is not capitalism per se. It's the fact that competition isn't fair. Uh, it's the fact that the, the dice is loaded in favor of the big guys. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that needs to be addressed, uh, whether it's in the energy sector, in, a, in the financial sector, in the telecommunication sector, practically in any sector. Uh, there needs to be uh, a more transparent and level playing field, which will allow um, the small companies to, to grow. And what is the most challenging thing in this Th upcoming that's general it. election? Uh, that's it. Uh, I think if we were competing on ideas, if we were competing on the quality of the candidates, uh, I, I think we, we, we would have um, much better politics and I, I wouldn't you know, uh, be worried about any constituency uh, in, in which we, we, are, we are running. Uh -huh. um, but money distorts everything. Uh, an enormous amount is, is uh, being prepared to be thrown at the people. Uh, in this upcoming election. 
And that is the one single issue that I'm most concerned about. And it's not just about my ability to win, but it's about you know, the, uh, the country and, and, um, and the, the lack of uh, and, and, and the declining quality of politics and its ability to, uh, to serve the people. Mm -hmm. From the past two years, or even more, we have seen a lot of things happening along the way up until now. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think that Thailand, how Thailand will move forward to the future? And can we really see a real peaceful cooperation among the parties? I hope so. Um, I think uh, politicians should learn from the past that uh, if, if they were to justify their action as being justifiably above the law, that gets the country into trouble. But I think the, the first basic and most important basic principle is the rule of law. Everybody, um, nobody is above the law, and politicians above all, because we write the laws, uh, should be the ones uh, who, who realize that and make sure that everything they do is within, within the law. It doesn't matter if you don't disagree, uh, if you disagree with each other. Um, and that's normal in politics, but as long as everybody respects the rules um, and uh, the basic democratic principles, then I think um, the country can move forward. As a Shad Patanakla party leader mm. and also a prime ministerial candidate, what is an, an ideal Thailand for you? A Thailand in which everybody respects the rules, uh, a Thailand in which uh, ev every vote carries the same, the same weight, mm. uh, and a country where uh, politicians compete on, on practicable uh, ideas uh, that are aimed at improving the quality of life of the people. Um, Cha Patanakla strived to do our part uh, in creating that kind of Thailand and, um, and we're hopeful that we can make uh, significant progress. And why do we have to choose Cha Patanakla? Well, you don't have to. Um, but if you were, then you'd be choosing a party that uh, understands people's problems, understands uh, the economic challenges in particular, which I think is the biggest problem that the, the average Thai person faces today. Uh, you would be choosing a party that has the most practicable uh, and realistic solution uh, that can address this, and a party that will not back away uh, from challenging vested interests in making the necessary change. Uh, in order to improve the quality of life for the people. Thank you very much for today and I wish you all the best and good luck for this upcoming general election. My Kha pleasure and thank you. Kha. And that was Kun Gon Jatikavanit, Prime Ministerial Candidate from Chad Patanakla Party.